Hello again, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. I'm back, and this time with Megatron. My next of the Transformers Metal Earth kits. I've already done Optimus Prime. Now it's time to put together his nemesis, if you will, Megatron. No glue or solder needed. Not that that's unusual. I have high hopes. Optimus Prime turned out really well. So let's open this up and see what we have. Let's see what we have. There's the instructions. And here are the sheets. And it seems like before we have two different sheets for the instructions. At least that'll be good. So I really enjoy the clarity and detail of the previous instructions. So just like Optimus Prime we have multiple pages. We have the uh, metal sheet, little map with some colored parts. I guess showing these similar parts throughout. So it looks like most of the similar parts on these are on the same sheet. And then we have the flow chart. Which looks to come on now. One, two, three, and four. And then five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. So much like before, I, I like the little coated or coated as I like the color in the chart here. It will probably help find similar parts. And last time when I built Optimus Prime, whenever it would point to, say here's 10, it's pointing at this item, I wouldn't cut, if I got to 10, I would cut the other one out first, the one that wasn't labeled. So that later on when I hit 10 again, it pointed straight at the part I needed. So I did that a couple of times. It was very clear. There's been kits where I've had to cut out pieces and try to compare. There was very similar and I couldn't tell if they were the same. And Especially with um, the destroyer droid had a lot of very similar circular parts and it was very confusing. I also like it with this being on this page. Um, it won't be too hard to flip back to it for the most part. And when I get to the final page, this map will be over to the side here and up front. I won't have to flip, 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 flip. So. For starters, of course, the it's upside down now, but your usual twist and or bend and twist tabs, the needle nose pliers thing, a little diagram of tabs and insertion holes, just your generic information to get you started. Things that I used building this kit tweezers, that is the number one thing. You can do most, if not all, of this kit with tweezers. Although, I recommend a few other things. One of which being the Fascinations Metal Earth Toolkit. Clippers for easily removing parts. Flat nose pliers, which are good for bending and shaping. And needle nose pliers, also good for bending and shaping and reaching into recessed areas to twist tabs. They are rather long nose. I also have a shorter pair of needle nose pliers. I've also found it handy to have some sort of dental tool or pick to reach in and pull items out. I have a couple of different ones but mainly something small that I can reach inside and, and adjust tabs or pull out pieces that got bent too far. It is also helpful to have an assortment of dowel rods or paintbrushes or pins I've got a crochet hook that I've stashed from somebody, um, the handle of an X-Acto knife, objects to help round off certain parts. 
And also having the X-Acto knife is handy, not for cutting things, but because the blade is small and can get into small areas and bend over tabs. You can also use a pocket knife. Um, I just happen to have this down here in my work area right now. It can take a few tries to find the right size dowel rod to shape the curved parts. I try to start with something a little big and work my way smaller until I find the right size. When dealing with curved or angled parts, you often need to bend or adjust the angles of the tabs so that they line up for assembly. For really small circular parts, I sometimes use a small paintbrush. It tapers off and lets me get just the right size. The instructions say to bend over these tabs on small round parts. These tabs will be visible when the model is completed and bent over tabs will not stand out. However, the tabs on the inside are usually twisted. Here I am straightening out the tabs on the parts. I just bent over so I can fit them together. Be patient and take your time. There's a lot of bending and attaching to turn these kits from flat sheets of metal into 3D objects. Unlike Optimus Prime, it does not seem to matter how this leg joint is placed. When attaching the leg to the body, be sure to get all four tabs in place. Three of the tabs are on the leg itself and go into the body. There's one tab on the body that goes into the top of the leg. I originally tried to put this together without closing the flap so I'd have more and better access to twist the tabs, but I quickly found out that doesn't work. You're not able to attach that upper tab if you attach the leg before folding that flap shut. The plates that go on the hip have four tabs that hold them on. I bent them all in opposite directions and then pushed them down with the side of the plier or tweezers. Because of the lengths of the flaps around the base, I did not use a tool to bend them over. They work very easily. Instead, I pushed them against a table or a flat object, bending the entire part all in one shot.
I use flat nose pliers to squeeze the tubes to make it round instead of oval shape. The piece that makes the barrel end of the gun's open sight is tricky to bend and fasten together. It took me a bit to line it up to make it work. I needed pliers to carefully place this piece in the center of the body. I had to attach one tab at a time. The face and the head is challenging. You start by shaping the very small parts of the face and then attach it to sort of a backing plate. Then you have to shape what amounts to the helmet and attach the face inside of it. I initially started bending the helmet parts the wrong way and had to undo and refold them. It was a struggle to get all the tabs into the right places while trying to hold tight enough to bend the tabs but trying not to bend and warp pieces. One of the joints broke but is being held on by other tabs thankfully and I had to spend time after assembling the head to bend it back into shape. I edit up a lot of the video to try and keep it as short as I can, and in doing so, it may look like many of the parts fitting together the first time. It's not always the case. I sometimes make several attempts and adjustments before things fit together, and a lot of those adjustments are edited out to save time. building the weapon that goes on Megatron's arm, be sure to put the textured sides of the piece inside. The gun is supposed to be smooth, except for two small knobs. I mistakenly bent the first piece the wrong way and had to redo it. Then again later with an end piece, but I decided to leave that one. My Megatron will be unique. I had to use a hobby knife to bend over several tabs because they were close enough to other objects. That was the only way I could get to them. I have found it useful to roll tube shaped objects against the table to bend their tabs over and lock them into place. When it came to the longer, thinner pieces of the gun, I did not quite follow the flow of the instructions. I decided to put all the pieces of that section together before attaching it to the center section.
After attaching the small pieces, I found this part of the arm rather difficult to shape. The instructions are a little fuzzy as to how to make all of the bends, and it was a small fight, but I managed to get all the tabs together. Oftentimes, I can use one of the side pieces as a guide to make complicated bends. But with the fist, you have to make the bends before folding over the side pieces because of the way they attach. Oops, I put a piece on backwards. Sometimes it pays to double check the placement of parts before twisting the tabs. The second or left arm has several little parts that attach. Sometimes the parts get pushed in too far, or the bends get pushed in too far. The dental tool is great for pulling those pieces back out. Finally, the arms attach. This part is pretty straightforward. Getting the gun on the right arm is tricky though. It just barely fits in the space provided. I present to you Megatron. He was more difficult than Optimus Prime. I often get the question, what kit would you start with? Well, if you're looking at the Transformers kits and you're, you're wanting to do the Transformers kits and you want to know where to start, not, not Megatron. Optimus Prime is better. I still haven't done the other two, but it almost seems like there's a different style of writing in the instructions. It's a different thought process. The instructions for Optimus Prime were very straightforward and clear as far as the flow. One thing to the next thing to the next thing. This, although clearer than a lot of instructions in the past with the different Star Wars and Star Trek kits I've done, it is not as straightforward there are several parts where you do this part and you kind of set it aside and you do this part and you set it aside more so than I would have expected there were a couple of different instances where I did things a little different than the workflow one of which being I believe it was this gun you know when you're assembling this gun right here it has you do 
one side and attach it and then it has you attach this little ring here and the cap and then this long piece and while that's not impossible I built the whole thing the whole end piece first and then attached it to this box because it just seems like the tabs would have been in easier to get to to bend if I did it that way so that was a choice that I made I tried to put the arms on differently instead of these side pieces that are connected to fold out and rather than fold them in and then try to connect the arms I connect the arms and then fold them in and that's kind of a mistake because there is one tab right here and right here that can only be easily inserted when the folds are in properly so that was not the best of decisions also it gets confusing as far as several of these rounded pieces like the, the gun and scope are flat silver and not textured this piece here does have some texture to it and that's because I folded it backwards and I thought you know what that gives a character so what but there's also little pieces here this little tiny piece and then there's a piece here that the texture does go on the outside and there's other pieces there's little pieces down here in the knee joint area that also have the texture on the outside so it kind of goes back and forth sometimes the texture is on the out sometimes it's on the in got a little confusing for me I messed it up a couple of times I redid one or two of these parts folded it the wrong way then flattened it and folded it back the other one or two pieces did break I ended up buying a second kit to complete this and redoing part of it but it is now finished and ready to go battle Optimus Prime. Of course, I did the good guy first because we can't have unchecked bad guys, unchecked uh, Decepticons roaming around without an Autobot there to counter them. And there were several times where it didn't seem like the parts wanted to fit together, at least not easily. There were like, this section of the arm, this upper section has some bizarre fold to it and it was difficult to get it all to come together properly plus the instructions aren't real clear there's a couple areas where should I bend it this far or should I bend it that far I'm not real sure and the instructions aren't helping but again they're better than they were and then this gun piece you can probably see in the video this gun or scope here is a very tight fit and the plate or piece of the arm it connects to does not have a tab holding it down and I can see why because it barely fits there it's a very tight squeeze but in the end it takes time so be patient um, I used to try and do all these kits in one sitting maybe take one break in between now I take a little more time and try to be more patient with it because I end up with a better kit so my big advice is to be patient take your time find an area you can work on it if you can that you can leave it undisturbed if you need to go do something else or take a break. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Thank you for watching. Keep on keeping on.